Gary Beswick, and I'm the executive director of the GLBT Historical Society. And I'm here at the first, uh, the inaugural Disco Coalition event, which is being put together by some community activists here at Lookout uh, every week. Um, and we're the first beneficiary of the Disco Coalition. So the organization is raising money for different uh, community groups that do uh, good work. Um, in support of the queer culture and queer causes. And so they chose us because uh, we collect and preserve and share our queer history. Um, well, we are the keeper of the community's history. We have archives going back over 150 years of community uh, history, our memories, our materials, um, our art, videos, and all these things are used to create books and documentaries and films that uh, reach people throughout the world to tell people about uh, our queer history. So that's what we do. We also have a museum in the Castro, and we're building a much larger museum in San Francisco. And that's really why we're raising money is because uh, our museum is not large enough to really fully represent the full diversity of our community's history. So. And I just want to say I was in uh, Birmingham, Alabama yesterday, and I went to the Civil Rights Museum there. And it was really an amazing experience because it was a huge museum that you could really walk through the entire history of the city of Birmingham, of course, which was at the heart and soul of the civil rights movement in uh, the United States. Um, you know, and the, and the city was founded after the Civil War and uh, built from the ground up uh, after the Civil War. And, uh, and it wasn't really segregated until around 1900. And then they totally separated everything, you know, where the blacks had to drink from this water fountain, the whites drank from that water fountain, go to different schools, different churches, lived in different neighborhoods. And uh, it was really amazing to walk through there. It was actually, what I went through, I was walking with a, um, a black family and a white family at the same time, and then just me by myself. And so I was kind of like watching, reading the exhibits and everything, and, um, and it was really an immersive experience where you got to actually go into a classroom uh, that black kids had, and then go into a white kid's classroom from like 1950, and experience what that was like, and read about it. And, and, it's, and uh, I came to this one exhibit uh, that showed a KKK uh, uh, Grand Wizard in his white costume with the pointed hat and everything. And, and I saw that I was standing back and looking at this exhibit of, about the Ku, Ku Klux Klan. And there was a small black kid about seven years old and a white kid about eight years old. And they were both standing there. They didn't know each other and they were just looking at it. And then they looked at each other and they looked back at the hooded figure. And then they just started talking, and I thought, wow, that is so powerful, you know, to, to like have them like stand there in front of this scary thing that was telling this amazing story. And I think they're going to remember that, you know. Um, so it made me think about why we need a museum of that scale about uh, LGBT history in San Francisco, where so much of our history has happened. And I thought, you know, if we could have something like that where kids could walk into, walk into the room from City Hall where Harvey Milk was shot, you know, and we have in our archives, we have the suit that he was shot in, you know, and, and, and see, see the aftermath of that, you know. I think that that would really be powerful and have an, uh, an amazing, effect on kids and that they would share that with other kids so you know i think it's really powerful to be part of the gay community because we come from all different cultures and all different races and genders and sexualities and all nations throughout the world and so you know uh we get to know each other no matter what community we come from you know or, and uh, we tell each other our stories and then we take those stories back to where we come from. And I think that that's how we create change um, and that's how we
teach uh, love and tolerance for young people especially, and but also old people, you know. So that's why we do what we do at the GLBT Historical Society. And if you want to sign up and join us, you can go to on to our website, glbthistory.org, and help us to build our new museum. Thanks. and I host a party for the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence called Fur For All that benefits different charities. And the charity I picked was the LGBT History Museum. So, or the Society. But it was for the museum, for the opening I picked. Anyways, so I love the museum. And this party, which is supporting the museum, is amazing. I mean, I have to say, all night I've been walking around with a bunch of different people and my outfit is very disco, so people are really enjoying that part of it. And the thing is, which you maybe can't tell with this makeup on, hopefully, is that I was actually there. Like, I'm that old. I was drinking in the days of disco, at the disco, partying with the gay boys, amazing fun. All this music brings it all back. We have this big uh, spinning disco ball up here. I don't know if you can see it. I love that. That. You, that was at every discotheque in um, not only San Francisco, but where I'm from, Boston, and certainly every gay bar had a disco ball. And at some point in the night, the lights would hit it, Donna Summer would be on, and we'd all be shaking our thing. It was amazing. And, you know, in these days where everybody's hooking up on Grinder or Scruff or whatever, and, you know, people don't really go out anymore. I mean, now they just dial up sex and have it come to them. And in the olden days, we actually had to used to, you know, meet people and talk and put ourselves out there in a way that was a little bit more daring. And a lot of that history got lost in the 80s and 90s with AIDS. And, you know, we live in a much better time now. And it is so great to hear this music, which was the soul of our community, you know, Sylvester was a huge disco star with a lot of disco hits. Came from right here in the Castro. And his music inspired lots of other people. I mean, it was this happy, fun, amazing music. He did uh, some American standards like Cry Me a River as a disco song and brought like, you know, Cole Porter and other gay history to life with disco. So it's amazing to be here at this party that is uh, supporting the GLBT History Museum and Society with disco everywhere. It's like living history. So that's what I think. Hi, I'm Juanita Moore and you're at Disco Coalition. This is the kickoff party for this awesome event at the Lookout and it's benefiting the GLBT Historical Society which is going to be the beneficiary for my pride party this year. It's uh, so important to archive all of what's happened in our queer world, and especially because of what's happening right now in our government. So I'm super excited to be hosting and supporting this amazing event, and I'm happy to be here. And join us every Friday night from 5 to 9 p.m. I love you. Loads of love. Mwah. Hi, I'm Bruce Podette, and I'm here at the Lookout for the monthly celebration of his history and queer culture. Uh, the Disco Coalition fosters solidarity, builds community, encourages activism via gatherings and collaborations with the collective intention of shepherding queer kind toward a brighter future. Uh, you can get more information about them through discocoalition.org. Uh, tonight's event is a fundraiser for the GLBT Historical Society, uh, centered in uh, the San Francisco's gay neighborhood, the Castro. Uh, been around for a quite a long time and a 
great place to learn about gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender history, both from San Francisco and from around the world. Um, I love going there, and it's on 18th Street.